In this video, I will teach you the essentials of Python programming. Python is one of the most widely used programming languages and is used in everything from AI to data analysis and even to create add-ons in Blender. In this video, I'm going to use an online compiler to make it easy to follow along, but I recommend installing PyCharm, VS Code, and so on if you want to do more serious programming in Python. If you want to output text in the console, you can just use the print function and then use a quotation mark and the text inside the function. And then when you run the code, you can see that we get hello. Next, we can also define variables. Let's say a is equal to four, and then we can print a and get four. Next, if you want to run a block of code multiple times, you can use a for loop, so for i in range, and then let's set it to uh, 10 times, and then use a colon, and then we can print, let's say, hello world. And then when we run the code, it's going to print hello world 10 times. We can also use it as a counter. So now it's going to count from zero to nine because it's 10 loops. We can also use a while loop, which keeps running as long as the condition is true. So let's say while the counter is less than 20, we can print the counter. And then for each loop, we can add one so that it goes up to 20. As you can see, it goes from zero to 19, which is the last value below 20. Next, we have an if statement, which executes a block of code under the condition that the if statement is true. So uh, let's say that if x is larger than four, print x is larger than four, which is uh, true in this case, which means that it's going to execute this block of code. And when x is equal to one, it is not going to execute this uh, code. Now we can add an elf if statement. And the else if statement is going to run if uh, the if statement was false. So uh, let's set it to x is less than four. And then we can add an else statement as well. And the code below the else statement is going to run if neither of the conditions above are uh, true. So uh, x is equal to four, let's set it to four. As you can see, it now runs x is equal to four. Next, we can create a function, which is a useful way to organize and reuse code. So let's create a greeting function. And this greeting function is going to print nice to meet you, and then add the name that you input into the function call. So we can add plus name, and then plus quotation marks, and then period. And then we can call the function. So uh, type in greeting. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to type in the name. So in my case, it's Olav, and then nice to meet you, Olav. So in general, functions make your code much more organized, and it makes it so that you don't have to repeat blocks of code. And this, of course, makes maintenance of the code much easier as well. Another thing that is useful to know when you make calculators and so on is to know how to add user inputs into your code. So let's add a float type input, which is a number with decimal points. And then the output is going to be enter a number and then your input is going to be that number. And then the result is going to uh, be the multiplication of the input number with 40, for example. And then we're going to print the result of the input multiplied by 40, which is the result. So F and then quotation marks and then curly brackets, user inputs. And then we can type in the text of uh, what's happening to the inputs. So multiplied by 40 is, and then we add the result as well. So curly brackets and then result. And then when we run the code, 
we can enter a number, so let's enter 2 for example, and then it prints out 2 multiplied by 40 is 80. In Python, you can of course also import modules. So let's say we want some random numbers. We can import random. And then we can generate a uh, random number between uh, 0 and uh, 10, for example. So random dot randint between 1 and 10. And then we can print the uh, random number and then run the code. As you can see, we now get numbers between 1 and 10.